Hello and welcome to Touch Plus. My name is Martin Perhiniak. In this video, I am going to show you the animation and timing panels in Adobe InDesign CC. These panels can be used to add interactivity to your documents, but unfortunately, they can only be saved as a Swift file from InDesign. So you can't really use this in a digital publishing workflow or an EPUB, but what you can do is to go to File, Export, and choose the format here at the bottom called SWIFT. So that's the SWF Flash Player format. When you have this option selected and you click on Save, you will get the following options in which you will see Interactivity and Media, and by default is set to Include All. You can decide whether you want to save a HTML file as well, or only the Swift. And if you want to make changes to the compression used for the images in your Swift file, you can also go to Advanced. So here you can find image handling, for example. But let me show you first of all how to add animation. I have this frame selected here on the left. And from the animation panel, I can choose a preset. So I click on this uh, pop-up. And as you can see, we have loads of presets here. Let me choose Zoom in 2D. So if I click on that, this little preview will show me exactly what's going to happen. So whenever I hover over it, it will give me a preview. You can see it's a bit complex animation because it has a blur to start with, which then fades away and uh, the image gets into focus. And also its size gets bigger, so it's like zooming onto the image. To be able to see how it looks on my selected frame, I can click on this little icon here, which is the preview spread option. Once I click on that, I will get the preview in the Swift preview dialog box. So if I click on this again, I can see exactly how it looks. So that's the first animation I added on this spread. And I can also check out my timing panel, where I will also see that there is already an animation assigned to one of the elements in this uh, page. If I select my other image, I can choose uh, also the same effect, or I can choose another effect. Let me just choose, in this case, zoom out. So now, again, I can see the preview, and I'm going to play these animations. So we can see one of them zooms in, the other one zooms out. If I want to, I can change the order of these animations by just simply dragging them up and down here in the timing panel. So now that I change the order, first the bottom one zooms out and the one on the top zooms in. If I want to change the animation for one of my selected elements, I can just simply change it from the preset. So I have it selected and I'm going to set it back to zoom in. So now if we test it, it should zoom in like that. Once again, if I want to change the order, I can just move them up and down here in the timing panel. So now first one zooms in and then the second one. Let's just add some animation for the text as well. So once again, I just select the text frame and choose a preset for this as well. So I'm just going to use fly in from right for this one. Let's have a look how that will be animated. So preview, uh, we'll see how it comes in. Perfect. Now I'm going to use the same for the second text frame. So again, fly in from right, like that. And uh, I would like to, first of all, show the image on the top and then have the text frame coming in. So I'm just going to change the order like this. Let's have a look at that now. So image, text, image, text. Perfect. That's the order I wanted to animate these elements. And now I can select any of them and decide how long the duration should be for the animation. And also in the timing panel, I can set up delay between them. So for example, if I want to have, let's say, one second delay between uh, the web content text frame and the second image, I can just type it in here. Let's just add two seconds delay there. It's very important though that selecting the image doesn't mean that you assign the delay to that element. You have to make sure you also select it here in the timing panel. So I'm just going to set this back to zero seconds because the image which I wanted to uh, set the delay on is this one. So the DPS Folio Workflow Preview Image. And for this, I'm just going to type two seconds. 
So now if I play the animation, there will be two seconds delay between the two images. I can also go back to the first frame, for example, and change the speed here. I can choose ease in, for example, which will add that really nice effect and easing in effect for the animation itself. So let's test that out. And as you can see, it speeds up at the end. So once again, if I play it, it eases in, slowly starts to zoom in, and then it speeds up. And if we have a little bit longer duration on it, maybe let's say uh, three seconds, then it will look a little bit more uh, interesting. So it starts zooming in and there was the ease in effect. We can have the same setup on the second image. So if I just select that one, in case of changing the animation properties, it's enough to select the frame. So you don't have to select it from the timing panel. So once again here, I'm just going to set the duration to three seconds and I choose ease in for the speed once again. So let's test this. So it will ease in on the first one and, and the duration is three seconds. There's a two second delay here. And once again, the image eases in slowly and then comes in the text from the right. You can also choose other options like loop or you can also set an event to a button. So instead of having everything automatically load when the page loads, you can also create buttons. So let's just test that out as well. I am going to create a button first of all. So let's create this rectangular frame. I'm going to um, use corner radius on it as well, something like that. And I'm going to use the type tool as well and click on this and type in a start first line. Set this in the center and also use the text frame options to use vertical uh, justification set to center. Now I can make this a little bit bigger and maybe change the font on it. Let's just use the same font, Helvetica. So, that will start our first line. I'm just going to leave this button here and I'm going to create another button and I'm just typing second line. So start first line, start second line. I'm going to put these in the middle and let's just turn these into buttons. So this first one is selected. I go to the buttons panel, which I already covered in another video and I change the type to button. So that's already created. I am going to select the second button and also turn it into a button. Now that both of these are created, I can have the image selected here and click on this little icon here to create button trigger. So once I click on this, I can click on the button and then these two will be connected. So the button has now an action to play that animation of the image. So once someone clicks on this, it will start playing the animation. Let's just connect the second image to the second button. Once again, I need the animation panel. I click on this little icon here to create button trigger. Click on the second button and that's again created for me by default. So now if we go back to the animation panel and click on the preview spread option, it will start the animation even if I don't click on the buttons. Now the reason for that is because I have to also make another change to the settings, but it already works, we can check. If I click on the start first line, it starts the animation of the first image and start second line will start that animation. So that part already works, but what I need to also make sure is that for each of these animations, I have to get rid of the on page load option. So if I turn that off, and I only have the on release or on button event, then it will only start playing when I click on the button. I'm going to do the same with this image here. Once again, I turn off on page load and only keep the on button event. So now if I start uh, the preview, we'll see that the text comes in, but the images are missing. So now the images can be loaded in with the buttons that I created at any time. And the text, because it still loads in with the page load, won't wait for the images. And additionally, you can also check out the properties under the animation panel. So 
if you open that up, you will find even more options that you can assign to your animations. These features are great for interactive training materials. And remember, a Swift file can be used on your website as well. Of course, if you want to make sure that this content is visible on uh, iPhones and iPads, then Swift file is actually not the best format for animations. You should create these instead in HTML5 using Adobe Edge, for example. But if using Flash is not a limitation, then InDesign is great to create these simple, interactive animations. And that's all I wanted to show you in this video. I hope you learned some useful techniques. And if you want to learn more about digital publishing in InDesign CC, make sure you join me next time as well here on Tuts Plus.